Welcome to the SeizureBusiness.com podcast. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and I am joined today by my partner Jim Wazek from Hello. Success Enhancement. And our guest today is Bill Chu from Win Trust Mortgage. And today we're going to talk about asking the right questions of your client or customer. So thanks for being here with us today, Bill. Thank you, Kevin. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Um, in terms of my business, I'm a mortgage broker with Win Trust Mortgage. Uh, here locally in the western suburbs. I've been uh, in my business for more than a decade. Um, a common question I get from either clients and, and or business partners is, well, what is your specialty? What is your niche? And um, my niche, as I look back at my 10 years of producing in this business, really is to help clients um, especially ones with complicated financials to so finance, um, whether it be their first home purchase or their uh, ongoing home purchases. So if you see, if you come across someone who is in a picture perfect uh, candidate for a loan at first blush, you can work with them to get their financials in order and try to f get them qualified for something. Is that basically what you're saying? That is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, usually. Uh, usually my process starts with a conversation to better understand what is the client trying to achieve as part of the home purchase and along the way of course trying to understand the clients um, household financials so whether they work for a company as an employee or someone like yourself uh, who owns a business and have been and that kind of stuff well, the topic that you brought up today, asking the right questions of your client or your customer, is really interesting because I know a lot of times there's probably situations where I've had clients with needs entirely different from what they came in to talk to me about. Correct. That mm -hmm. if, if I had gone through a checklist of you know making sure I completely understood their situation, I might have been able to service them in other ways. So what are the, what are the sort of questions you ask? What's your process for even knowing what questions to ask? Um, usually, the conversation starts with uh, a client either doing one of two things. Um, they're either calling to, to get a quote, <laughs> um, or they're calling to share with me, Bill, I'm referred to you, I need a mortgage. Okay. Um, then my questions and my process begins. Usually I start with, well, tell me what you're trying to accomplish. Um, along the way, of course, my goal is to better understand their current financial situation. So there will be some questions that I ask, such as, uh, well, do you work for a company? What do you do? Mm -hmm. um, or do you own a business? Uh, and along that topic, how long? And by the way, how do you pay yourself? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the other aspects of other questions that I ask, some of them are very straightforward, such as are you buying a home to live in or are you buying it to rent out? Because that makes a big difference uh, in my world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So other than just making sure that you get a loan that's the right fit for them, what are some of the, what are some of the positives to having a good set of questions prepared? The positives um, of asking the right questions and having a good set of questions to ask. Don't get me wrong, there are times that you can't ask all of these questions in the first conversation. Mm -hmm. It may be an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. But the positive for myself as a mortgage professional and for the client is really that of we make sure that their loan scenario, therefore their loan application, meets the loan that they need. Mm -hmm. um, why is that important today? It's important today, Kevin and Jim, because one out of three potential home buyers, as they're trying to secure financing for their home purchase, get denied for a loan. Mm -hmm. It's never they get denied up front. Sometimes they get denied after spending money through home inspection, they've arranged movers, et cetera, et cetera. And at the 11th hour, um, the lender that they started something with pulls the rug from under them. 
the, the reasons are enormous. So how can, how can the principle of asking the right questions be applied to businesses other than mortgage lenders? Because we don't have an audience of purely mortgage lenders. We've got a Absolute. bunch of broad Absolute. business owner base. So Absolute. how would you talk to your non-mortgage uh, lender friends and say, this is what I do, here's how you can apply it to your own business? Sure. Absolutely. I fully agree with you. Uh, my business is just one small sliver of what makes the economy go round and round. I think along this topic of asking the right questions, having the right questions to ask, it's so very important. I think in a lot of businesses, the more complicated uh, the product or the service, uh, the bigger ticket item the product or service mm -hmm. is, it's important to ask the right questions because two things. By asking the right questions, you're, you're qualifying the opportunity. You're qualifying whether you provide the solution the client's looking for. And third, let's not forget, by asking enough of the right questions, you're in, in a much better position to propose the right solution for the client. Well, you know what, maybe we should do, um, maybe we should do a little role play. How about if um, I'm trying to uh, sell you uh, marketing services and I'll ask you some questions and then you sort of debrief on whether or not I ask the right questions. Okay, so I'm the buyer. You're, you're the, the buyer. I'm, okay. the, I'm the seller. How's okay, that? sure. So, Bill, how you doing? I'm Jim. Jim, I'm Bill. Yeah. So, I understand you're, you're trying to grow your business. Yes. So, what kinds of things have you tried in the past um, and what's worked and what's not worked? Uh, we've tried, for example, like many other small businesses, outsourcing uh, various non-core uh, focus areas of our business. Why? Because, hey, you know, let someone do, let someone else do what they do great to support us as a supplier of a product or service. Okay. And uh, how has that, how's that worked for you? Uh, there are times it's worked well, uh -huh. and there are times where it's just complete nightmare. Okay. So do you have a, a specific goal in terms of the amount of business you're hoping to write this year? Um, in terms of any business, I think, you know, when you're uh, sitting down, writing a business plan for the next upcoming year, of course, what you're trying to do is grow revenue, right? Either grow revenue or save money. So are you, do you think you're on, on track for that plan? Yes. Good. Good. Now, to go even beyond that plan, do you think you need more chances to quote, or do you need to be better at the sales process once you have somebody uh, already interested? Um, in terms of driving revenue, yeah, uh, of course, more chances to quote. Okay, so you're pretty comfortable with your your sales process. Yes. Okay. Okay, so have you considered um, having guys like uh, Kevin and I come in front of your office in gorilla suits with a sign, get your mortgage here? <laughs> uh, now that you ask, I've considered it. Okay. Um, yes, okay, I've considered it. Okay, and uh, what held you back from buying such an obviously great service? Um, while that uh, gorilla suit concept... Um, is certainly a unique idea. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I know about my business is that that's not always how someone um, starts a conversation to try to secure financing. Ah, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. So end of uh, role play. So, so how'd I do, Bill? I mean, uh, how would you critique my uh, question asking? You you ask all of the right, right questions. Really? You're trying to qualify. Uh, is there an opportunity uh -huh. Uh -huh. and trying to qualify what you bring to the table fits what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you know what you did there, Jim, that was important is you were, you were, you weren't so concerned on what you were selling. Mm -hmm. You were thinking, trying to figure out what Bill, the customer needed, wanted, was mm -hmm. looking for, what had failed in the past. And right. so you weren't right. going to try to sell them, you know, some outsourced stuff that didn't work. That was a complete nightmare right. before. Right. Well, you know what? Somebody told me once, so that's a pretty sharp, uh, marketing guy is the way you really show your expertise to to a prospect is not by what you say but by what you ask yes and i think that's um that's a huge uh, a huge thing and and you know as an example if um 
if I took my car in to uh, to be repaired, and um, you know, I said something like, you know, it's hard to start. And if the mechanic goes, oh, we could do a tune-up or, you know, we could change the oil or whatever. But better would be for him to ask more qualifying questions. Like, you know, does that happen mostly in the morning when it's cold? You know, did you notice that your uh, fuel economy is worse? And then there's, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and then you feel like the guy, you know, really understands you. Right. So, you know, asking the right questions is, is the best way, really, to demonstrate your, your expertise. Yeah. And a lot of the times along this topic... Uh, Kevin and Jim, uh, when I do speak with clients to help them understand a little bit more of what I do and why I'm asking questions, mm -hmm. I use the example of when each of us goes to see our physician or a specialist mm -hmm. to do what? To solve a problem. Correct. Here is what we all know. Every physician that has a white lab coat uh, embroidered on the coat MD, they are absolutely, by all means, a physician. But the reality is, in that respect, with each of us, we're looking for the right one that mm -hmm. has the right chemistry with us, that asks all of the right questions. Yeah. You know, Kevin, I look at this would come up a lot in legal business where a person would come in and say, you know, I, I want to do this, and they might, A, not really understanding their own problem, or B, misapplying a solution they've seen work in some different circumstances. Do you see that happens in estate planning all the time. Okay. Everyone comes to me and says, I need a will. But, Bill, you know, being in real estate, you, you probably know that most people who own real estate really need a trust. So everyone mm -hmm. who comes to me says, I need a will. And that might be a client right yeah, now. Yeah, that's <laughs> Our show is working. The phone is ringing off the hook. Uh, but it, a lot of, most people who come and say, I need a will, they walk out after being educated, deciding that they need a trust. But I can't even have the conversation about what a trust is and what it does until I've let them talk first about what their situation mm -hmm. is. Even if I know them walking in, I could ask them three questions. Do you own mm -hmm. real estate? Do you have kids? And I could know most of the things that I need to know to say, all right, right here's what you need. Um, but no one's going to be listening to me until they've had a chance to say their piece. They come right. in wanting to tell their story, and until they've told me what they need to tell me, they're going to be more thinking about what they have to say rather than listening to what I'm trying mm -hmm. to educate them on. So mm -hmm. I have a pretty simple process and when I'm meeting with an estate planning client, and this is the most transactional part of my business, it's you know find out what their goals are, who are they trying to take care of, what would they like to happen, what's their financial situation, just like Bill was talking about. And only then, once I've got it all mapped out, then I can educate them in a more specific, tailored way, rather than just mm -hmm. saying, this is what trusts do, but... This is how a trust can help right. you in your particular right. situation. You know, since you bring up the example of wills uh, and trusts, um, I just want to make a statement that I've, I've seen this happen from time to time. But you know, there's a lot of young people who will feel, well, you know, I don't need a will and I don't really have any assets yet or anything. But one thing you don't realize is if you have children, you should definitely have a will because one of the things you could specify in the will if both of you should decease unexpectedly you can specify who's going to take care of those those kids which could be an important important reason to get a will even if you don't have a lot of money absolutely and I think um, in the world that we live in today um, where the whole concept of modern family blended families yeah. is becoming more of the norm and as a result of that as it touches my business that type of modern family with their complexity also means there's some financial complexity, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, by asking enough and all of the right questions, and sometimes the question to ask as it relates to Kevin's business is sort of asking, well, why do you think you need a will or a trust? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in preparing these questions, I've seen, I've seen two ways of doing it in my experience, and they're both good in different circumstances. Some financial advisors I've worked with in the past will just have a, a checklist. Like, it, you know, you're, when you take your car to the mechanic, they've got the mm -hmm. checklist they go through, and, you know, mm -hmm. they, they ask, what's your, what's your estate plan situation? Do you have a will or trust? What's your, you know, what are your goals? And they work through basically a worksheet. Right. Um, I'm a little different. 
I, I basically know I've got four or five points I know I have to hit, but how I get to those points is much more conversational and meandering, and I don't really have a prepared checklist. Mm-hmm. And in some legal matters, a checklist I'd probably be better served to have a checklist. Um, how do you guys prepare the questions that you're going to ask a, a potential client? Um, is it something that's, you know, I know I need to hit all these points, or is it just more of a conversational thing like Jim was doing with you a second ago, Bill? Sure. Um, I think to that question, Kevin, I'm probably a lot more like you. Um, the questions that I ask in either the very first conversation or a second conversation, maybe in-person meeting, um, I do it in the context of having a conversation. And one of the things that I found to be a whole lot more productive for myself and the client in question is setting expectations up front for each conversation. Meaning, um, example, if I'm meeting John Doe today, I will have communicated to John Doe, today, John, I've time blocked 45 minutes for our first conversation. My goal is to understand a little bit more about you, um, ask some questions along the way, and also give you time to ask some questions of me. Um, so by setting that expectation, um, immediately we start the process. There are certain questions that I'm going to feel uh, listening, responding to John Doe as to what I need to ask. The questions that I don't have an opportunity to ask in this first conversation, of course then, our goal is to set up another meeting. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I just make a comment that uh, and obviously there's all different situations, but I, I, I think the notion of a, a conversational discussion is way better. And the reason I say that is um, another expression I heard somewhere along the line, and I think this is really important, is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. And if you can, through asking questions, um, show that you're sincere and you really want to do the right thing for them, then uh, they're usually more willing to open up to you as well as uh, more likely to hire you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in almost every business, uh, law, uh, financial services, uh, complicated IT services, or even businesses that are just purely transactional, Mm -hmm. retail, uh, the one common thread I think that cuts across all of those industries is this. Clients want to do business with someone that they like, right, can get to know Mm -hmm. and feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you're just working off of a checklist, uh, you've got your sort of head down saying, oh, fill this out, I'll come back in 10 minutes. Right. Uh, You're not going to get the warm and fuzzies from a client and vice versa. Right, right. And you know what? There's a a tool that people should... um, maybe consider, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but it's called the DISC uh, personality profile. And it, it it teaches you about the different styles of communication that different people have. Mm-hmm. And you may have some people that are, are you know, too conversational, you want to rein them back in. Some people are more detail-minded. Some people are more focused on the relationship. So uh, as a tool to help you ask the right questions, I, I would certainly recommend uh, you know, looking at the DISC uh, profile. Absolutely. I think it's a very useful tool. Mm-hmm. You know, I think in talking about the difference between a checklist and just a conversation, I think really, for, at least from my perspective in my industry, the best way to go is to have, you know, prepare a checklist for yourself. Yes, right. Don't do it in front of the client, but <laughs> if you do enough of these, you kind of you know what you've got to go through and the points you've got right. to hit. But if you can right. if you can hit those points in a conversational way and make sure you're not missing anything key. I when I was first starting out, there were a lot of consultations that I was, you know, after the fact, I was like, "Man, I wish I'd I'd asked about this sort of thing or that sort of thing." And at, it, not that it impacted that particular service, but again, you know, cross-selling, finding out what their other needs are, finding out if I can possibly refer them to someone, you know, like you, Bill. It, it, in both of our industries, referrals are important, and unless you ask, "Hey, do you have an account? Do you have a financial advisor? Do you have a mortgage guy?" Um, you're not going to find that out, and that's just that's got to be something that's internalized. And maybe it makes sense to, if you're new at whatever you're doing, meeting with a client, 
maybe come up with a list for yourself, review it a little bit, do the do the pre meeting prep, mm-hmm. so, and that list doesn't necessarily have to change. You just have to you know make sure that you hit it. Absolutely. And you know you make a good point, Kevin, because uh, if you're in a business where you get a lot of a lot of your business through referrals or through networking. That's another environment where asking great questions can help. You know, usually if I meet somebody at a networking function, I usually say, you know, what are you up to? What are you trying to do? How can I help you? Mm-hmm. You know, before I talk anything about what I might be doing or, or looking for. So, very true. Well, Bill, thanks for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank uh, you. How can people reach you if they'd like to uh, get a mortgage? Uh, people can reach me in two ways. Uh, my phone number is 708-203-2258 or visit my website, choose your lender, C-H-U-S, your lender.com. Jim, how can people reach you? Oh, they can reach me at 630-272-3895. And also let me add, if you know of people who you think would be great guests for us, uh, we're always looking for interesting people, and uh, you could call me with that information as well. And Kevin? Yeah, you can reach out to me. We do free consultations at 630-324-6666. We practice almost every area of law. Uh, and you can see more podcasts and video blogs. And now we're doing transcripts for these podcasts, so if you want to read them, uh, you can go to seizeyourbusiness.com. And uh, you can also check out learn-about-law.com if you want to learn more about the legal aspects of being a business owner. So uh, thanks so much for your time, Bill. Thank you.